Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're gonna have a look at the GitHub desktop app. But first, be sure to subscribe, and if you wanna show your support, head over to our Patreon page. So due to the popularity of the Learn Get in 20 Minutes video, I decided it might be a good time to show the GitHub desktop app because it makes working with Git so much easier and you can practically avoid having to deal with the command line and all of those headaches. I used the desktop app back when it first came out and it wasn't all that great, but its current version is actually pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna show you the basics. Be sure you check out the Learn Get in 20 Minutes video if you haven't worked with Git before. It's not necessary, but it will help you figure out what's going on here. So first thing is to head over to the desktop.github.com and download the application. It's about 80 megs, so it might take a second. And then once it's downloaded, go ahead and do the installation. Okay, so the installation is pretty quick. Now when you open it up, this is what you'll see. It's just a blank screen. You don't see any repositories. There's nothing else listed here. So there's a couple things that you can do. You can create a new repository and that's actually what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna, we can add a local repository, which means if you already have a repository set up uh, somewhere on your system, then you can add it uh, into the GitHub desktop app. If you just wanna create a new repository, then select new repository. And that's what we're gonna do here, and we'll call this GitHub desktop demo. GD demo and we'll put it in d slash git that's fine and you can choose to initialize this repository with a readme already built in if you plan on doing that you can set up your git ignores uh, we'll come back to that later and of course you can choose your licensing if that's what you want to do create the repository now I've got this window here so you can see we have a .git folder, so it's been initialized for us. Now you're not gonna see anything in here. You can't manage your files uh, inside of this window. So what we're gonna do is just add a couple files. We're at ABC and one, two, three. And then we come back over here and now we can see inside the window We've got these green pluses here next to each of our files. So one, two, three, ABC. The green plus means that these have been added to the repository. Now remember, these haven't been committed yet. They've just been added to the repository. So let's go ahead and let's add these in. And these check boxes here are pretty significant. So if we only wanted to add the 123 text file, then we can just check that box. And we'll go ahead and commit that. And now we still see that ABC is still, has been added, it's still in the new state. Uh, it's staged, but it has not been committed yet. So we can go ahead and commit that now if we want. Now down here, this is the title uh, of your check-in, or your commit rather. And then if you wanna add a description about your commit, then you can do so here. Uh, the, the message here or the title is necessary, the description is not. Go ahead and commit that. And now we see no changes. Everything is good to go. If we go over to the history tab, we can see we've got our initial setup. We committed the 123 file and the ABC file. Okay, so let's go edit one of these files. Save that, okay. 
Now we come back in here, now we see we have a modified icon, so abc.txt has been modified. And over here in the preview window, it'll tell you what's been changed. So let's check that in. Commit it, okay. Now let's go back in and let's delete this. Okay, so again, in the preview, you can see that Hello YouTube was removed and Goodbye Command Line has been added. Okay, let's go ahead and check this in. Okay, so that's the basics of managing your, your local commits. So now let's say we want to set up a new branch. So up here, you can see we've got our branch drop down. And if we had more branches, they'd be listed here. You can filter them out using this guy. But we want to create a new branch. And we'll call this bug fix. So now our current branch is bug fix. And if we want to see our list of branches, we can click our branch drop down. Now we see master and we see bug fix. So if we want to go back to master, now we're in master. Or we go back to bug fix and we're good to go. So let's go over here in bug fix and let's just change this to Okay. Very subtle message there. Come in here. And we'll do the check-in. Now again this this commit, excuse me, not check-in. This commit is done on the bug fix branch. All right. So let's go back over to the master branch. And remember, if we come back out here, we can open up this file again. Now we see the value that is inside of ABC, but inside of the master branch. So if we want to merge, we come up to the branch menu and we can select merge into current branch. And we are currently in the master branch. We want to merge bug fix so let's merge into master and there were no merge conflicts and we're good to go now again we're still in the master branch so let's come back over here and now we see in the master branch we have the text that we added in from the bug fix branch so branching has been made super easy by the desktop app and this is so simple to do and you can just manage your branches here the branch menu, you can rename the branch, uh, new branch obviously, delete this branch if you don't need it anymore, and you can do updates from other branches, uh, and of course merge into current branch, which is what we just did. So now one thing that I don't really like about this is let's make some changes. going to conflict with each other. So we've made changes uh, to the same file, but in each branch. So now what's going to happen is, let's go ahead and merge into current branch. Again, we're going to, we want to merge bug fix into master. So let's do that. And you have a merge conflict, and it tells you that, which is kind of nice. And it gives you a visual of what the merge conflict is. Now, we already went over this in the other video, so I'm not going to cover it too much. But what I don't like is that you can't change anything in this preview here. I mean, you can highlight the lines. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to figure out how to actually make that uh, turn into a uh, merge resolution. So maybe you can let me know in the comments below. But I don't really like this. So if you do get a merge conflict, I don't recommend that you use this tool uh, or even a Vim-like tool anyways. Get a better tool like uh, WinMerge or whatever your other favorite tool might be for merge conflicts and use that instead of this. And of course you have your icon here that says we have a merge conflict.
Okay. Now over here, this is our list of repositories that we currently have that we're, that we're dealing with. Now a lot of you want to work with GitHub and this is GitHub Desktop. So let's work with a remote repository. Now over here, this third button, this one is Publish Repository and this is Publish This Repository to GitHub. So this is a brand new repository that we added to our local system. And if we wanted to push that up into GitHub, we would use this button or use this option, give it the name, give it the description, and you can tell it to keep this code private, choose your organization, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, if you have a GitHub Enterprise account, then you can sign in and deal with it there. I do not, so I'm not gonna do that. And once this is all filled out, publish your repository, and you'll be able to see it in your GitHub account, and it'll be public. But that's not what we're gonna do. I already have repositories in GitHub, so let's go look at one of those. So what we're gonna do is go to the File menu, and we're going to select Clone Repository. And there's a couple options in here. This is github.com. Now in this tab, you're gonna see the repositories that you have under your account. So I've got a few of them. Now you'll see the ones that you've created, the ones that you forked, and so on. So I've got a couple of them. And if you have a repository, somebody else's repository that you wanna clone and work with, then you can just pop in the URL and then you tell it where to go and clone it. In this case, since I wanna make some changes, I'm gonna choose one of my own repositories, FluentGuard, and a local path, it's gonna go into git slash FluentGuard, and that's okay with me. Click clone. And depending on how big this repository is, it could take a little bit of time. Okay. So now the same thing here. Uh, once we have the repository, we don't see anything. But if we go back to our Git folder, we now have FluentGuard. It's been downloaded, and you can see all of the files in that repository. So let's go ahead and let's open this. Okay, now we have this open. Let's go ahead and let's remove this link here because unfortunately this site is no longer available and so this link is pretty much broken. So let's delete that link. Save the file, come back in here and it shows us that we have uh, removed our lines. And don't worry about this, I added that later and forgot to take it back out. So we've got a change here. Let's go ahead and removed broken article link. And we'll add a description, because why not? Go ahead and commit that to our master branch. Now remember, this is Git. So what we did was we made a change and we checked it in, or sorry, we committed, but we did that locally. So this has not yet gone up to GitHub. So if we come over here, we can see we have one change that needs to go up, and this is after we did our local commit. So we wanna go ahead and push this up to GitHub. Okay, and there we go. Now if we come back to our history, we can see we have removed the broken article link, who it's by, and then what changes there were. And of course, if you want to look at the rest of the history, uh, there have been some contributors for this project, so you can see what they did. And of course, you can see the test check-in that I did earlier. Okay, so let's go over to GitHub. And we do a refresh, and now you can see the readme. It no longer has the link at the bottom. And that's it. It's as easy as that. Now you can work with your repositories local, and you can also clone remote repositories and work with other repositories that are not yours. Now, if you're doing uh, long-term changes, 
and you need to keep up to date, you can just come in here and use fetch origin, click that, it'll go out and make sure it pulls down the latest code. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'll show you guys how to do a pull request in the next video. Uh, so be sure to subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.